Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at IRR, otherwise known as the internal rate of return. So why do we need IRR? Well, businesses have limited funds to invest, so every business will want to ensure it invests its limited funds in such a way that it generates the best return on its investment. And this is precisely what IRR helps you to do. It enables you to estimate a rate of return for each product you have under consideration so that you can choose to invest in the best one. Before we jump in, note that net present value and internal rate of return are very closely related. If you don't fully understand net present value, then take a look at our net present value video by clicking the link in the top right hand corner before continuing with this video. The easiest way to understand IRR is to work through an NPV example and then show how IRR differs from it and relates to it. So let's do that. Suppose you have a project under consideration that produces these cash flows. As you can see, this project requires an initial $5,000 investment and then produces $600, $1,100, $1,500, $2,000 and $2,300 over five years. To calculate the NPV of this project, the steps you have to take are, first, set a discount rate, second, calculate the present value for each future cash flow using your discount rate, and finally, add up all the present values to get the NPV. So let's take a look. So for this project, we're going to set our discount rate to 10%, which is the hurdle rate our project must return per annum to be considered worthwhile. Now, if the project beats the hurdle rate, it will have a positive net present value, but if it doesn't, net present value will be zero or negative. The second step is to calculate the present value for each future cash flow based on our 10% discount rate. So we're trying to work out what our, for example, our $600 cash flow is worth to us today, what our $1,100 two years from now is worth to us today, etc., etc etc. And then we will add these up to get the net present value. Now the formula for a single present value you can see here. And in the formula we take a cash flow and divide it by 1 plus our discount rate. So in this case 1 plus 10 percent which we represent as a decimal. So that becomes 1 plus 0 0.1. And we then take that number 1.1 and we raise it to the power of our time period. So that could be one for year one or three for year three, for example. So let's take a look at what this equation looks like for year three so that you really understand it. So in box one, we have our present value formula for a single cash flow. And in box two, we start substituting in our values, adding in our year three cash flow of $1,500, our discount rate of 10%, which we put in as 0.1, and our exponent, which is three, because we're calculating the present value of our year three cash flow. In box three, we now work out the lower line of this equation, the denominator, giving 1.331, Finally, we divide our $1,500 by 1.331 to get a present value for our year three cash flow of $1,126.97, as you can see in box four. Now notice that money in the future isn't worth as much to us as money in our hands today because of the time value of money. Again, check out our video on net present value if you need a recap of what that means. So the final step is to add up all the present values. So we add all of these values up to get our net present value, which in this case is 375.66. So now that we understand how to calculate net present value, let's calculate internal rate of return. And to calculate this, we flip the equation around. We begin by setting NPV to zero. And once we've done that, step two is to guesstimate a discount rate such that all future cash flows, when discounted back to the present, add up to zero. So let's take a look at how that works. So as you can see this time around, we're beginning by setting net present value to zero. So now what we have to do is we have to guesstimate a discount rate that will produce a set of values here such that everything in this column adds up to zero. Essentially, we have to guess what number to use as the discount rate to make all the present values add up to zero. Now, IRR is a number that you can't calculate, so it has to be found through trial and error. So for our example, we already know that a discount rate of 10% produces a net present value of $375. So the IRR 
must be higher than 10% to give us a zero MPV. So let's guess 14% and see what happens. Well, if we do that, then we get a negative net present value of minus 236. Now, obviously that's less than zero. So that means we've guessed too high for our IRR. So let's try again. At this point, we know IRR is above 10, but below 14. So this time we'll guess a discount rate of 12%. Okay, so here we are. This gives us a, a net present value of minus 61.29. So this time we're really close, but our net present value is still a bit negative, which means we have to increase our IRR guess a bit. And if we keep guessing in this way, we'll eventually find that a discount rate of 12.37 results in an MPV of zero. So we can say that the IRR for this project is 12.37%. Now you know how to calculate the internal rate of return, but as you can see, it takes a lot of guesswork and is very slow. The good news is that there's a much speedier way to calculate the IRR using Excel or Google Sheets. All you have to do is enter your cash flows and use Excel's IRR function to estimate your internal rate of return. Now, you've learned how to calculate IRR for a single project. However, the real power of IRR is that it allows you to compare different projects. Suppose we have three projects under consideration for investment. By calculating the internal rate of return for each, we can weigh them up against each other, even though each project requires a different level of investment. Now, in this example, project two is the best investment in terms of IRR because it's the highest. But one thing to note, though, is that you're not just comparing projects to each other. You also have to consider what else you could do with your money. So, for example, if you could earn 20% interest on this money from the bank, then it would make more sense to put the money in your bank than to do any of these projects. So before we wrap up, let's just quickly cover a couple of the advantages and disadvantages of IRR. So in terms of advantages, it allows you to compare projects of different sizes regardless of the investment size, because IRR is a percentage. It accounts for the time value of money by converting future cash flows into present values. And it's simple to calculate in Excel and easy to understand. Essentially, the bigger the IRR, the greater the project's return. In terms of disadvantages, then IRR doesn't tell you everything about if a project should go ahead. Other factors need to be considered, such as the risk profile of each project and the strategic benefit of completing each project. Finally, it only uses one discount rate, whereas in reality, the actual discount rate can change over time. And that's especially true if you're investing over a long time period. So in summary, IRR is very similar to net present value, but instead of deciding on a discount rate up front, IRR works by calculating what discount rate will give us a net present value of zero. Ultimately, the higher the internal rate of return a project generates, the higher its return and the more attractive the project is, all other things being equal. So that's it for this lesson. Really hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.